Hello, I'm Eli Stacy, and today I'd like to give a complete overview of the RefBox application so you can use it to best fit your video review needs. We're first going to cover the UI and learn basic operation, then we'll go into the settings to configure video inputs, UI layouts, player control, clipping, and monitoring. Let's get started. Before we get started, let's first understand the UI layout of the RefBox application. In the center, we have our video inputs. At the top, we have settings, layout, and video information. To the right, we have our clips and cues bin, and at the bottom, we have our media control. Operation on the RefBox application can be very simple. All we need to do is if we want to review an action, such as a foul that recently took place, all I need to do is go on the jog pad, and I can scrub back with all of my cameras in sync, so I can find the exact point that I want to review, such as him getting knocked over there. If I'm back a little bit, I now have playout control, so if I want to see all of my camera angles in sync, if I go to the bottom, I can press play to play it at a 100%, or I can use other playout controls, such as my 50%. And here I can see it playing out in slow motion with different camera angles, but uh, perhaps that's too many camera angles, it's hard to get a good look at any one of them. So what I can do is I can go and select multiple camera angles that have uh, a good view on the action. So I select these three, and then when I double tap on them, I can put those three to full screen. From here, I can actually pinch and zoom on any of my camera angles, such as where he's being knocked on any of them, and I still have my playout control. So if I were to play it out at 25%, I can pause it, and I can also jump back with this slider here. So I can go back before the action, or I can also jump frame by frame, all while still being zoomed in. I can also reset my zoom with the button at the bottom left. And then from here, if I want to make a cue point of this, noting that uh, I made this call. All I need to do is go down to the bottom right and press mark. This will create a queue in my queues bin here. Now at any point, if I go back to live, if I want to review a previous call that I've made, all I need to do is press on that queue point and it will jump me back in time to that action. Another option similar to queues is the ability to make clips. To do that, we go to the bottom right, just to the right of the queues bin, I have my clips bin. Then, what we can do is we can mark an endpoint at the beginning of an action. Let's let this play out. He goes and he makes a shot. Perfect. So I'm going to press pause, and then I'll mark out for my clip and press save. From here, it opens up the clip properties window where I can manually give it a name, or I can use keywords to add certain metadata tags to it. So for instance, that was on the home team and it was a two-pointer. Then when I press OK, I can see that clip added to my clip spin. I can have this clip uh, exported at the end of the game manually, or I can have this automatically exporting in the background as I go throughout my game. Then once I'm ready to go back to my next action and I'm done with this clip, all I need to do is go to the bottom left and either press back or home. I'm going to press home to get me all of my camera angles, and then I'll go to the bottom right and press live to go back to my live inputs. Well, that's the basic operation, let's now go into the settings and customize it to best fit your production needs. The first thing that we need to configure in our settings is our video inputs. To do that, we go up to settings at the top right and go to servers. On the servers panel, I can view all the VBox backend servers available to this Rapbox user. Right now I have the .122 user, and if it has a UI gateway, I can enable that here and enter its IP address. One thing about the RefBox is I can network together multiple backend servers. If I go up to the top and press add, and I enter the IP address of the second server, I can then use both of those cameras as sources in my UI. Next, we can go to our server config panel. This is where we set the video input resolution Currently, I'm set at 1080i50, and then we also set the resolution for the proxy videos going to our RefBox user. Currently, we're on 480 by 270 but we can select it from 960 by 540 or the full-size 1080 image. Now, let's look at the different options for our user interface. There are a few different panels that can control the RefBox's layout. 
the first of which is the interface layout. From here, we can select which interface we'll use. By default, we're currently on master, but if you have a specific use case, such as medical or commentary, you might want to pick one of these to best fit your application. From here, we can also add our interface name if we have multiple users and need to identify this specific computer from another. Then we also have the display, currently is on one because we only have one display. And then the user group. If you have multiple users connected to the same backend server and want to share between them, you can select it as full or put them both on the same user group. If not, you can set them on different user groups. Then we also have the IP address of my local Nook running this UI, as well as the backend server. On the camera and layouts panel, we'll be able to decide the main UI for our system. If we go all the way to the left, we can set certain names for any of the camera inputs. If we want to change their name, we can do that here. Then to the right, we can see which server we're connected to and the number of sources coming from that server. And then below that, we can actually view what those sources are in this panel here. Then to the right, we can see a preview of our layout. If we go right now, we're on main. If we go through the different layouts, we can get a preview of them. But let's change the third layout. To change that, once we're on it, all we need to do is go to this drop down and select from the different uh, presets that we have here. So let's just do a simple two by two to get four cameras. Then from here, if I wanna add a camera to any one of these boxes, very simple, all I need to do is go to the left and drag the desired camera to the box that I want. Then once I'm done, I can go up to the top and give it a name. So I'm going to name this as a four box and then I hit apply. I see that it was successfully applied and I see that that name is now applied to the top and if I were to exit and go to that, I now have that new layout. Finally, the last layout option we have can be found in the layout target panel. What we can do is we can upload an image to replace the background of any missing video like we have at the bottom two sources. So I'm going to go in here and find a file and open it. Then we select which layout we want it to be applied to. So currently we're in the 3x3-1. So now I hit add and when I press apply, we can now see that the bottom is replaced with this graphic image. Because you can use the RefBox's mirrored output for clean on-air review, this feature allows your RefBox to be used in your production while matching the branding or graphic theme. Next, let's look at our options for video playout control, both from the touchscreen and from the Shuttle Express. On the parameters panel, I can control some of the settings for our video playout. For instance, if I change my replay playout speed, that corresponds to the different presets that I have at the bottom. Currently it's at 50 and 25, but I can change this to 60 and 30, for instance, if I'd like. The other option that I have is a clip default duration, so if I mark an out point and save it, it'll mark 6 seconds before that point in time. The next is the jump interval in seconds. So as you see at the bottom, I have minus 6 seconds, that means every time I tap on this, it'll jump me back 6 seconds. This is where you can configure that setting. And finally, I have my live minus settings. Currently it's at minus 3 seconds, so when I tap on that button, I'll be three seconds behind the live inputs. On the shuttle behavior, we can configure the settings for the Shuttle Express. So this is a USB device attached to the Nook, and then it has five presets around the outside, which we can select from any of the ones here. So if we wanna create cues, mark clips, or control the playout, we can assign that to any one of these buttons. And we can also assign what the playout is going to be. So as I turn the ring, this is the uh, speed preset that it's gonna go through. And they, as you can see, it gradually gets faster the more and more I turn it. And then I can also decide what the behavior is for that inner ring. So every time it clicks on the inner ring, it's going to jump one frame. The next thing to configure is our clip keywords and export settings. In the parameters panel, in addition to my playout control, I also have my export settings. From here, I can select the destination of the files that I want to export to any of the local machines here. And if I have a network attached storage device, I can select that here as well. 
Then I can select the file format. Currently I'm using H.264 with an MP4 wrapper, but you can use any of the ones selected here. And if you're using H.264, you can select the bitrate and group of picture length. Then you can decide if you want this to be automatically exporting or not, which means that as soon as you make the clip in the UI, it starts exporting that clip to the destination that you chose. And if not, you'll have to manually export each individual clip. And finally, I can adjust my file name template. This uses information from the clip to generate a unique name for each of the clips being exported. And for instance, if I want to add anything to that, I can go in here and add certain information such as percent keywords. So any keywords applied will be added to its name. Next in the keywords panel, we can decide which keywords open up in the clip properties window to be added to the metadata of a clip. As we can see, we have a four by four uh, grid here, but if I wanna add new ones, all I need to do is go to the top and let's add another row and press create grid. From here, I can go in and add what keywords I want on each of them. So in this case, I'm going to do a foul, a technical foul, blocking and pushing. I press apply. And now if I create a clip, so if I go to the bottom right, mark in, mark out, and save, now I have the ability to add any of these keywords as metadata to that clip that I just created. Finally, let's look at some other settings we can use to monitor the game. First with audio, second with the picture-in-picture -picture overlay, and finish with the slow-mo remote. On the audio panel, we can create different presets for monitoring specific channels of audio, depending on which camera you have selected. As you can see at the top, we have multiple presets that we can set. If we go to the first one, you'll notice that the audio type is per camera. This means that when I have camera one selected, I'm going to get camera one's left and right audio. But if I go to camera two and set the preset to custom, I can now have a mix of different audio channels when I have this one selected. So if I go to the first channel, the left will be camera one, track one, but I can also set an audio source from a different camera. So I can go to camera two and get track one there. So now with this preset, I can get a mix of the audio coming from camera one and two, but when I have camera one selected, I'll just get the left and right mix of camera one. For each of these, I can also set whether the playout is going to be either mono or stereo, and I can select a delay of the audio in frames to match with the video on the screen, and I can decide if I want to be showing my audio meters or not. Once I'm happy with my audio preset, I just hit apply and exit. Then I go to the top and select which camera I want to monitor. If I select camera one, it's going to give me just the left and right channels for camera one, but if I select camera two, it'll now give me a mix of both camera one and two's audio. Next, in the PIP tab, I have the option to overlay a certain portion of video from any one of our camera inputs on top of the UI. So let's drag in camera 6 to this window, and then we can drag our finger across and select this portion of the video. Here we see a preview of the game clock, then all we need to do is press yes on this toggle here and press apply, and if I move this window out of the way, I can see that we already have a PIP of the game clock. But another thing that we can do is we can add a border around it. So if I go to the bottom left and press file, I can load a target image and I can see that it applied around the uh, preview window here. I also have other editing parameters such as cropping the image in to get a very precise uh, measurement, not necessarily just with dragging. I can also adjust parameters uh, around the target image for the border and I can also change its positioning depending on which layout I have. So currently in the 3x3-1, I want it to be in the center, so I press add. But if I go to a different layout, such as a 2x2, maybe I want that to be at the top right. Then I press add on that one, and when I hit apply and exit, I now see that this pip has this border around it. From here, I can move it wherever I'd like, and it'll also stay when I switch to uh, the focused area where I just have three other video sources selected. And because it's in sync with the rest of the video, 
I can scrub forward or back and this clock will be in sync with the rest of the video. And finally, we have the remote panel. This is for deciding if we want to be using the slow mo remote for controlling playback. First, we need to enable it. Then we can select the jog factor for the wheel. And then we can decide how we want the speed to be played out. With the T-bar, it can either go from 0 to 100%, or we can have it in the middle at 0%, and then it can go minus 100% and plus 100%. And finally, all you need to do is enter the IP address of the network attached remote, and 192.168.1.200 is the default IP address for the remote. I hope this has given you a good understanding of the capabilities and operation of the RefBox application. If you'd like to learn more about the VBOX platform, there's information on our website. Thank you.